Hey everybody, let's learn something new today with Mr. Mosley, the music teacher. Muddy. The story of blues legend, Muddy Waters. By Michael Mahan. Illustrated by Evan Turk. McKinley Morganfield was never good at doing what he was told, especially when it came to playing in the mud. His mama should have been mad, but she couldn't help but laugh. Oh, my muddy baby, my sweet muddy baby. McKinley's mama gave him a life and a laugh and then she was gone forever oh child long gone oh child sail on but McKinley did have Grandma Della. She scooped him up and tried to keep him clean and finally just started calling him Muddy. And he had music. Muddy loved the Say it with me voice of the preacher and the glory singing of the choir but the music Muddy really love they didn't play on Sundays what Muddy really loved was fish fry music it was shake off the dust and ring out your worries and laugh Still alive music. It was the blues. And Muddy couldn't get enough of it. To have the blues was to feel bad. But to play the blues was to take that low down, skunk funk, deep stomach hurt, and turn it into something else. Muddy liked the blues. Unfortunately, Grandma Della did not. Last I checked, you can't eat the blues for breakfast, said Grandma Della. No child of mine is going to waste his time with music. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. So he found himself a half smashed kerosene can to beat on. And a wheezy accordion in the squeeze. Piece of wire to pluck and made himself enough noise to feel good. Not even Grandma Della could keep him from dancing. One night, Muddy watched his hero, blues legend Son House, smash an empty box take the bottleneck and smooth his jagged edges over fire. This is called a slide, he said, dragging the bottleneck up the strings. The guitar, how, la 
like a wolf. Powerful, lonely, and proud. That was the sound of the Mississippi Delta. That was the sound Muddy heard in his heart. Muddy saved his pennies, bought himself an old Stella guitar, and practiced and played for anyone who wanted to listen, and a few who did. After a long while, the howl that was in his heart finally started coming out of his guitar. On weekends, Muddy made the juke joints jump, playing for the workers when it was time to unwind. But when Monday came, Muddy was back in his overalls, back working the field. Sharecropping was back busting, soul breaking work. And Muddy was already in a bad mood when the new boss man started picking on him. Muddy had gotten good at bearing his anger and his pride and his hurt. To do otherwise could get you beaten up or worse. But today, Muddy couldn't do it. He was tired of being picked on. I ain't a boy, he said. And I sure ain't your boy. The boss man's face went red with anger as Muddy walked away. Stop right there. Or you'll never work in this town again. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. Chicago's got a lot of people, he told Grandma Della. But I don't think they ever had a Muddy Waters before. Me and my guitar. Gonna make it just fine. Don't you worry. Oh, child, long gone. Oh, child, sail on. The clacker track. Of an Illinois Central train rocketed Muddy and his guitar into the bustle and buzz of Chicago's South Side. Chicago was plugged in, turned on, and turned up. And so was its music. Rackets with electrified guitars. Them jazzy horns were making the blues jump all over town. Chicago was the city of the brown bomber, Joe Lewis, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. It was the city of the Chicago Defender. The legendary black newspaper dedicated to fighting racial injustice. And now it was the city of Muddy Waters. In the clubs, the bebop, jazz, and swing of horns and strings had laid itself down over the blues like a chiffon blanket. This was music by 
city smooth sophisticates, not country dusted hound dogs. No one wanted to hear a country boy playing country blues. You gotta shake the dust off. The club owners teased. You gotta jazz it up. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. The way he figured, his plane was just fine. It was their hearing that needed help. So Muddy plugged in, turned on, turned up, and out came the sound of the Delta. Buzzing and mad like an Angry hornishness looking for a fight. It was a deep feeling, gut bucket, gut aching music full of life and love and trouble and pride. It made people stand up and raise their hands and stomp their feet and laugh and cry and come alive. It was nothing like the primed and polished sounds people were used to. And they loved it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sail on. Sail on. the clubs but the late hours and low pay took their toll he couldn't live on change alone one day Muddy got a call a friend was making a record at the Universal Recording Studios and he needed a side man to back him up on guitar If Muddy played well, they might even let him record his own song. Finally, a chance. First, they recorded his friend, and then they recorded him. Muddy did exactly what they told him to do. They added strings and horns and that soft and sweet bluebird records beat. But Muddy didn't care. He was just happy to be making a record. Too bad they put someone else's name on it. Muddy couldn't believe it. This was supposed to be his big break. This was supposed to be his record. But it wasn't. At least not according to the cover. A year later, Muddy made a record for Columbia. This time, they got his name right. Too bad they decided not to release the record. Muddy was crushed. I play it like they say to play it, and they still don't like it, he thought. What am I supposed to do? When record producer Leonard Chess called, Muddy knew not to get his hopes up. Leonard just wanted Muddy to recall Leonard's music, Leonard's way. But Muddy knew this might be his last chance. So he said yes. Soft is right, sweet and polite. 
said Leonard. That's where the cats are at. Muddy picked up his guitar, walked to the microphone, but he couldn't do it. Not again. Muddy had never been good at doing what he was told anyway. When Leonard pointed to the horns, Muddy pointed to the exit. No horns, no jazz, no fooling, said Muddy. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail playing my music, my way. There was lightning in Muddy's eyes. If Linda could bottle that, maybe they'd have something. You get one chance said Leonard. Don't blow it. Muddy sat down with his guitar, pulled the microphone up close, and closed his eyes. Oh, child. He remembered the dust and the plow and the meanness of the land and the softness of King Cotton. Oh, child. He called up the sticky heat of a summer night, the power of love and the need for connection in a world that was so good at pulling people apart. And he played just like Sun House had taught him. Not with his fingers, but with his heart. Muddy sang about life as he lived it. With all of his pain, its power, and its glory forever. Still unconvinced. Leonard printed only 3,000 copies of the record and sent them to local stores. Muddy chewed his nails and waited. What if people didn't like his voice? What if he wasn't good enough after all? Muddy didn't have to wait long to find out. All across the South Side, the boom and bounce of Muddy's voice Thunder down from open apartment windows. People were talking. This new blues was something special. It felt honest and raw. It felt real. It felt like the past and the future and the country and the city all rolled into war. Not only did Muddy have a record, he had a hit. In 24 hours, it was sold out. Leonard printed more. A lot more. One day, the Beatles would be shaking Muddy's hand. One day, the President of the United States would be tapping his toe. One day, the whole world would know the name Muddy Waters. One day was on its way. Oh, child, long gone. Oh, child, say long. We're sailing on. Have a nice day, everybody. See you next time with Mr. Mosley, the music teacher.